All right, I got another 22 WMR, 22 Magnum ballistics gel test for you here today. Uh, over the past, I don't know, year and a half or so, I've done quite a bit of 22 Magnum and 17 HMR, and for that matter, 22 long rifle uh, gel test on the channel. Um, but I tested a whole bunch of different Magnums, and a few guys had uh, asked about these, these Federal 50 grain. And apparently, in a lot of the states um, where it's legal, People hunt those uh, feral hogs with these. Uh, a lot of the guys uh, choose these over the traditional 40 grain hollow points because while they are going slower, being a heavier weight, um, potentially a little more punch there. I'm not sure that it's really any more powerful foot-pounds of energy. It's probably close to the same. Uh, but that 50 grain would probably give you a little extra penetration, which on those larger hogs, that's pretty important. So we're going to put these in the block today and see how they do. Now this will be close range just like all the other tests. This is seriously the last one I'm testing. I just picked it up a few months ago and to throw in the block and see how she does and whatnot. Um, but I'm going to be doing 50, 100 yards and beyond gel testing with 22 long rifle, 22 mag here and uh, 17 HMR later. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but today we're just going to put them in here close range like I did all the other ones. Uh, for comparison's sake. So this is my Rossi RS22M, uh, 22 Magnum. I'll put a link in the description for the original review video on that if you want to check it out and find out more about the rifle. Um, you can see I got a Bushnell little red dot on there. So I'm using Knox 10% ballistics gelatin that I make myself. We will have two blocks set up. BB calibration today is coming in at 3.3 inches, so pretty perfect on the calibration there. I do always temperature control this stuff. If it's too warm out, I'll bring it on ice. Uh, you should be able to tell it's winter. So um, it's currently like 38, 39 degrees, which is actually about perfect uh, because optimal temperature for these blocks is 39 degrees. So we are good on the temperature. Get you guys a close up on those. I mean, they look pretty much like any 40 grain hollow point. They just must be a little longer to be 50 grains instead of 40 grain. Let me show you the specs here. So you can see there it does say 50 grain. And instead of like 1800 some feet a second like most 40 grain hollow points are, uh, they're advertising 1530. Uh, no doubt due to the extra weight, it will slow it down there. Anyways, let me get it set up here and we'll get send them into the block. All right, now normally I'd have the chrono set up in the front so we could get a velocity read, uh, but I have confirmed that my chronograph is no longer working correctly, so um, this is going to be the last gel test, well, other than the 410 one I have coming up next, but uh, it'll be the last gel test. I'm not too worried about getting velocity on these uh, until I can get a replacement chronograph. Uh, that one lasted me about three or four years, and I can't tell you how many times I dropped it. All right, let's see what we got here. So, I'll show you from the front here in a second. These blocks are a little cloudy too. This is my last time using these before I start a new batch here. But I'll try to get a light on here so we can see these better. There's the three entries. See what we can see up top. That's interesting, that one, at least that one, uh, shed some jacket there and it also looks like the largest wound cavity, so that kind of explains why it's the largest wound cavity there. Whoa, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Look at that one. Yeah, that's, that shed some jacket there too. So, uh, I don't know if we got a caption. Let me find these. So, looks like there's one there. Looks like there's one there. Let me take a look at these real quick to make sure I understand which one's which, and we'll, we'll go over it. All right, let me show you what I got here. So one of these curved in here. So we got two entry holes in this back block that are real close together there. And those are the two bullets from those. And then that far left shot, we got it clear over there. There's the entry hole for that one. And then it bounced off the table. It was coming at a downward angle. So that's got to be why that one went so far because it basically exited the block and kind of like skidded along the table there came to a stop so 
I'll take a few more in here because we're having pretty erratic uh, differences in penetration depth. I'll get a measurement on these ones real quick before I do that, but I know that one's just because it hit the table there. All right, I flipped these over, so it'd be the opposite order now. This would be last shot, second shot, first shot. There's from the bottom. Okay. I flipped it over so I can get a measurement on these. So I'm not sure which one. Uh, okay, that was the first shot. This was the second shot. These two crisscrossed as they went in, remember. So that one got nearly 15 inches of penetration, the first shot. Again, these are backwards because I flipped this front one. Well, actually, they're both flipped. Uh, 17 right there on that one, but I can kind of feel it, so I don't know if it hit the table. That's why I'm going to take some more shots. We'll come in a little higher to make sure it's not hitting the table. And then this one's clear out here, 20 and a half. Again, because that one did for sure hit the table. It, it skid the table right there. Of course, I will pull these out before we're done. Uh, check them out, get a retained weight and uh, expansion diameter and all that. That first one just didn't seem to do a whole lot. Second one's pretty nice. I'm gonna flip these up or something. And then the third one, at least looking at it from the side, was pretty dang impressive. That's a pretty large wound cavity there. So I that one might have tumbled. It's hard to tell because it skid the table and it is sitting backwards in there. Um so that might it might have tumbled there and then been backwards at this point. And I'm thinking that's what happened because that was just a massive wound cavity there, especially considering uh, yeah, there's no real, if this would focus, no real expansion to speak of there, so I think that's exactly what happened. A lot of people don't know that, and you get tumble like that, you get a whole lot of damage, so. Trying to get some sunlight on it there. There's the entries from right to left, first, second, third. Okay. Let's see if we can maybe see this one from the side. Yeah, it's just a little too cloudy. Of course, that one's easy to see. So here's from the bottom then. If we can see anything there so again I'm just gonna stick with that first shot not a whole lot of damage second shot it looked like it tried to expand right there and you can see some jacket pieces shot out so that one did a, a decent amount of damage right there at least initial damage and then this one on the side I'm almost positive it tumbled and that's why it did that there we go this seems to be the best angle I got so far so this is from the bottom so the reverse uh, order there. This is the last shot. This is the first shot and the bubbles are in the way of this one, but It's got some flowering right there. You can see but definitely uh, The second shot did more damage there and that third one of course because as I said, I'm pretty sure it tumbled right there I'm gonna set up here. I'm gonna take another couple shots in them, but you know that one that scraped the table That was the highest shot there so that tumble just caused it to nosedive there and go down and bump off the table so it was just luck of the draw basically so i'll just take two more in between these here and you know it, it could have happened the opposite it could have flipped the other way and went up out the top so i'm just going to take two more in between these and we'll see what we get all right let's see what we got this time Right there and right there. That one looks like it's doing some woo woo. <laughs> yeah, see it's backwards. So there's that one. And there's that one. I uh, I pulled the other three out to make sure we didn't hit them or lose track of them or anything. So this uh, now fourth shot was that one right there. And then fifth and final shot, this one right there. Let's get a measurement. Those are decent cavities. I mean, there's that one, the first one that we just fired just now, and there's the second one. So considering the low velocity and whatnot, not bad cavities, but I think a lot of that has to do with they're unstable because we've seen a lot of them end up backwards. This one's backwards. However, that one down there is facing forward. So, uh, so the penetration on this fourth shot, we just did 17 inches and that one's got some bounce back right in front of my finger if you can see it there so with that bounce back that one came in at about 16 there so these do penetrate pretty far it's just from what i'm seeing and what i ex it's pretty much what i expected they don't really expand that much and this is from only like five or six yards away so uh, they're definitely not going to expand at uh, further distances there
I think anything outside of five or ten yards, they're pretty much just going to behave like an FMJ. So you just got a 50 grain FMJ to get you that penetration. So I guess for people that, you know, there's some people that carry 22 Magnum in a pistol. So uh, for those people who don't care about expansion out of, you know, a pistol and they just want maximum penetration, these might be the ones for you there. Just kind of examining it here. And overall, I mean, you can see all these cavities in here. They actually don't look too bad, but... At further ranges, it's not going to do much because they're not going to expand at all. So these are what the bullets look like. So as you can see, expansion is very, very minimal. Um, so these are set in order from left to right in order fired. So this was our first, second, third, fourth, fifth shot. All right, let's get a retained weight on these. So the first one here, 46.8, second shot, 42, third shot, 47.2, fourth shot, 47. And remember, these are out of 50 grains total. 42.9 so you can see that they are all losing a little bit of uh, fragments and pieces and whatnot as they go into the gel block at least there at five or six yards so i'm going to try to get a uh, diameter it looks like that's our widest one there because the way that copper jacket bent up and over and then i'll just measure our second one here it's very similar to the last one i mean you can see best case scenario it you know, I guess properly mushrooming would be that second shot there. So we'll measure that one, and then we'll also measure this first one here, which is the largest overall uh, because of that copper jacket. Right, so I'm measuring that first one here, but it's interesting that the first one had one of the smallest permanent wound cavities, yet is the widest diameter. Um, you can see her there, sticking way out the side there, coming in at .365, so 36 caliber on that. So now I'll measure the second one here because that's like best case scenario, uniform, proper expansion, I guess. So then that one, the second shot, 0 0.277, 0 0.278, so 27, almost 28 caliber on that. Um, I think the reason this one had such a nice big bubble in the first few inches is just... Um, I mean, basically what expanded just kind of fragmented off of it. So that caused a little bit of fragmenting um, permanent damage there. So, I mean, but regardless, either way, you can see how these things perform. I'm only shooting like five yards. So I would say for those of you who thought this would be, uh, you know, a better hunting round or whatever or self-defense or whatever, it depends on what you're looking for. Penetration, yes. Expansion, no. Um, although, again, the permanent cavities, considering that we got very little expansion, um, you know, those cavities look pretty decent somehow. So, I don't know, maybe it's because it just ends up kind of like the small amount that it does expand, it gives it a flat nose of sorts, so that's what's doing that. Um, even that's surprising to me at only 1,500 feet a second, though, but... Hey, somehow they make it happen. Those are decent cavities. I have seen larger cavities in my tests from t different 22 Magnum. Um, I've also seen a lot larger cavity like the VMAX, and then you only get seven, six or seven inches of penetration because it just blows up the bullet, and then you stop there. Whereas with these, obviously, you're getting at least double that. Um, and then there's some that fall in between there. Um, but yeah, overall, considering looking at the bullets, look, you know, it doesn't look like they did a whole lot. The block says otherwise, although I can't imagine that beyond pretty much point-blank range, I think past 25 yards, we're not going to get any of that deformation, any of that expansion, and therefore none of that big tearing there. I think there's just going to be pretty little streamlined lines out there 50, 75 yards or further because it's just going to be like an FMJ. But there's only one way to know for sure. So, you know, eventually, like I said, I will be doing 50, 100 yards and... Eventually after that even further range gel tests with 22 Magnum 17 HMR etc and even centerfire uh, Rifles, so I guess we'll just have to stay tuned for that and see what happens at longer ranges when I get to it 
But I've had guys comment on some of those other 22 mag gel test videos saying that they take hogs with these all the time. And I'm assuming not at point blank range. So um, I'm going to guess that they're probably just making accurate shots and the penetration is helping them out. But who knows? Anyways, guys, that's about going to wrap this one up here. Appreciate you watching. If you want to get yourself any products you see me use in the video, even the Knox Ballistics Gelatin I, I cook up there, links in the description, uh, scale, caliper, um, earmuffs, shooting bags, steel targets, and more links are in the description. Again, I'll put a link in the description if you want to see the review video on that Rossi there. Um, but that'll do her. Thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you guys on the next one. Here's some... 22 long rifle hollow points I fired off camera out of an even shorter barreled rifle and these are just bulk pack hollow points uh, a gila actually I'm going to do a video on these because these things work pretty well but um, as you can see there I mean 22 long rifle there is putting these 22 magnums to shame so um, yeah I mean ideally that's what you're looking for uh, an expansion there and you can see that's a much larger overall diameter there so but with that, when you get expansion like that, that wide, that does greatly reduce your penetration by several inches because larger surface area, more drag, is going to stop the bullet from penetrating. So it's all personal preference as to what the shooter wants. If you want penetration, then you don't want that at much expansion because it's going to slow her down there.